Hello everyone, welcome to the Redman TV. Liverpool taking on Tranmere in the second of the pre-season games. Chris Pajak joins me, Tom Dutton joins me as well. Lads, it was a thoroughly enjoyable weekend of football. Um, we saw, you know, that Naby Keita came home, which was good to see uh, after a long wait, very long wait. Um, obviously international stuff as well, but look, Tranmere Rovers moved to the Tuesday night because they had the foresight to know that England were going to get into a, into yeah. a World Cup semi-final. They didn't jinx it, good, for you know, for diehard England fans. Um, they knew Jordan Henderson was playing, so they had an inkling. Well, you could see, it was really interesting, because um, Klopp talking after the match, he just basically said, not even asked about this Chester game. Like, I'd have swerved this game if I could to watch the England game. Um, so I wonder how much he's gone, oh, God, come on. I want to watch the World. I want to watch the World Cup. Can we? Can we back it in? I mean, I mean, hopefully he's not a big France fan. I know that's it, Bel Belgium, France, isn't it? But um, no, it's Jamie Liverpool. It's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, we got a glimpse of of Keita and Fabinho with the weekend, and I want to see a little bit more from that now. And you know, listen, I think it's good ultimately that they've moved it for the England game. I think you know there are a lot of Liverpool fans who do follow England as well at the same time and stuff. So it's, it's obviously brilliant and. You know, the fact that they get in this competition with semi-final stage now, I'm 100% I'm watching it. You know, yeah. we normally play footy on a Wednesday. I've not even considered playing footy this week. It is about watching the England game because you kind of don't want to be left out at seeing one of these type of things. Whether I'm a massive England fan or not, I want to be part of it. I want to know what I was doing. I want to watch the game, obviously. As an aside, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And obviously, we will talk more about Liverpool in a moment, but it's worth mentioning it because obviously there's been a lot of talk about it. It's like, if England won the World Cup, I would go down and watch them Parade the, the bring the trophy home. Yeah, if they didn't open top of that, go down because it's a once in a generational, it's a once in a lifetime kind of thing. But um, no, again, let 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 that bridge be crossed when we get there. I mean, Tom, it is all about Liverpool. It is all about yeah. fitness, and it is all about getting boss glimpses of, of of boss players. It's that combination of getting to see as Chris is getting to see more of Cater, more of Fabinho, and also. Running the rule, you know, we've done a fair bit. We did the transfer latest podcast this week. We did the final words after the Chester game. All the talk it's at, uh, uh, this summer, it's the, the last chance saloon for a couple of senior players. So that's your Sturridge's, that's your Origi's. Yeah. And also potentially for some of the young players, Harry Wilson, Shea Ojo and Ryan Kent. These are all lads who will be looking at these runner games now and saying, this is my big opportunity to, to shine. It's the battle for the bench, isn't it? It's, it's the battle yeah. to be the first sub, second sub, third sub sometimes mm -hmm. and being the person that Klopp can go to and go look playing a cup game we've had this massive Champions League game now we've got a cup game or, or whatever we need some rotation in the squad you've shown to me that you're good enough to step up to the Premier League level and, and it for me it's more about seeing these partnerships like Gomez and Clavan I really want to see I feel like that's probably going to be a partnership that we might see that's, that's effectively yeah. in, in old champ man days you'd have your first choice defensive partnership and you'd have your backup defensive yeah. partnership. And that is, uh, right now in terms of pecking order, with the greatest respect to Joel Matip, you know, there's your left side, backup left side of centre-half and potentially your backup right side. Exactly, and it's and it's even seeing the, the backup full-backs. Like, uh, Robbo, obviously Robbo is going to feature in this, but you're getting to see oh, how Klein's going to do after the other day. You saw him with a lot more attacking intent. You just don't see that from Klein, and it was nice to see him trying. Mm. He tried. He, he, he obviously doesn't have the ball that Trent has. Yeah. But it was nice to see him getting there, and regardless of the opposition, because a few people I've seen have said, "Oh, it's only Chester." It's meant to be only Chester. Yeah. You're just meant to get out there and run about and and show glimpses, not the it's whole a, game. The training games, they are, they yeah. are. That's what they are. With the, with the problem we've got, Chris, and this works both ways because you have you do have people who just treat them so like if Liverpool don't win a pre-season game, people treat it like it's a calamitous act. Mm. And by the same, they're also the same people who say it's only Chester when you beat them seven 0 Exactly, <laughs> that's the mad thing. And, and yeah. The thing is, I, I remember going back not too long, me and you, but probably sometime before doing this, but in the early days of doing Red Men, Liverpool pre-season games, you had to struggle to find them. A lot of them still weren't televised, but or they'd be televised locally in the country we're in or whatever. So you'd have to go like to Eurosport Germany and you'd find it on the dodgy satellite. So you might find one pub in Liverpool that might have it on. Or you, know, you could fight with your, with your local pub to try and get them to figure out a way to get it on. And now they're being treated like they're all, like it's an official thing. LFC and LFC TV are milking it for all they can. Fair play to them, by the way. But it's a double-edged sword that comes with it, is that because they are they are covering it like it's a proper match, even if they are being lighter and more jovial in the tone or whatever, 
it's it, inevitably people are going to get carried away. Yeah, it puts, and, and it puts pressure on the players at a time of the season where I don't think they really deserve or need that pressure. You know, that ultimately they're coming back in. They've been on holiday a lot of these lads yeah. for four or five weeks, and they've had four or five days of training, and they're playing a game of football. And we scrutinise them like it's the the be all and end all, and it's absolutely not. It's about getting fitness. It's about getting your touch back. It's about those partnerships that Tom mentioned. And for me, it's a, it's it's about a little bit more than that. It's about just see what the manager's plan is going to be. Yeah. You know, I, I said prior to the Chester game that I thought Ben Woodburn is done as a winger at Liverpool. Now, I've seen nothing that suggests anything otherwise. You know, he played in centre midfield against um, against Chester and he looked like he bulked up a lot. He looked yeah. a lot bigger and yeah. stronger than he did last season. And Well, certainly when we saw him at the back end of the year before. And it's about see seeing what he, he plans to do. So, for example, we saw Gomez, Rafa Camacho, I don't believe, I think I'm right in saying, isn't a right-back. Yet we saw Gomez as a centre-half and, and Kleine and Camacho play as the right-back. So does that mean that Gomez is going to be treated as a centre-half this season, which is what we've been clamouring for and for equally, ages? But then you can't draw a conclusion off one game. And because how much of this is just... Bodies for filling exactly. roles because, like the Woodburn stuff, if Woodburn doesn't play centre mid, who else plays it? Well, you play Curtis Jones centre mid. Well, who plays on the left? Who plays on the left wing? You're going to play Woodburn, maybe, but as you said, maybe we've decided he's just not got the the, the, the pace and or whatever. And whatever we, saw, for that. we saw last season during the preseason. You know, you you're not always getting an idea into what he does because of the body thing. You know, we saw um, Woodburn play as a six. Last season in pre-season against was it Wigan or something like that? He played as the six, and you never, we never even saw him last season. Uh, and then you've got like Wijnaldum, who actually did play as the six later on in the season. So it's interesting to see, and it's just a just a glimpse. You can't draw any conclusions from it, but I like that. I like that. Well, what we were saying on the final word was what you can get. I think is we're going to start to get an idea of. Not our first choice formation, but I think our backup formation for yeah. the season in this. I think we're starting to try things. And some of it is fitting people into roles because we've got, as we evidence on the squad depth show I did with Ross, we've got the most depth we have in any one position in the squad is centre forward. So the come point where we did our second half team and you've got Ings and Sturridge and stuff, God, just put them both up front, whatever. And we had Solanke and Origi. Solanke can play slightly more withdrawn, so we did see that in that first half. But I think we will see us experiment with 4-2-3-1 yeah. a bit more in this pre-season because I think that will be our way to, as I said before, way to get an extra attacker on the pitch. So there is something to be gleaned from this time. It isn't necessarily about judging a player on a full performance. It's about finding finding bits that you can go, oh, I like the look of that. And also, as I say, getting a look at the system and thinking, what, when could we use this? What can, what are the circumstances and what might, what players might best suit this kind exactly. of Exactly. It's, it's looking at the limitations of that system with the players you've got. You can, you can have scouted Cater and Fabinho all you want. You never know until you go in this Liverpool side, you're playing there and there and seeing exactly what they know and what they don't know so that you can train them up and, and let them better understand it. So after the, the game the other day, Klopp said, Cater knows what he's doing. Leipzig play a similar style of football and that's why you saw them breaking up. That's how Sturridge gets his first, is in by pressing really high up and yeah. him running back and winning it like Hendo. And he said that um, Fabinho came from Monaco and they don't play the same system. Yeah. So you're looking at him and, and he did look a bit stilted. I know they pressed on very highly in that first half, Chester did, which kind of slowed down his game a little bit. But I, I'm really interested to see Fabinho more than Caton uh, for Tramia. Just see how he's changed his game. I think from he, that it's interesting because you're, uh, weirdly, uh, he balanced the two teams out quite nicely. I think there's like he's got his X number of senior, reliable. These are going to be in the squad no matter what. Yeah. So you Clavans and your Milners, etc. And I think he kind of split them up across the two half teams and we're likely to see something similar again so you've not got a team you've, you've got two functional teams mm -hmm. you've got guys who can guide players mm -hmm. through in both halves so we, we, as much, the, the team that we're looking to see we probably won't see but we'll, we'll come on to that in a moment of course but it's weird for being you probably you could tell the difference I mean let's put fitness into this as well so Chester fell off big time in the second half as they're naturally going to but we were better for having Milner and Cater as, yeah. as a midfield too because they've just they've been there, they've done it, they understand the roles a bit better. Whereas Fabinho was first time there, Ben Wood, Ben playing a little bit in, in a new yeah. position for him as well. That ended up being the springboard for what we did because you all down the storage is a touch of class above the other forward lads. You wouldn't necessarily say there was five goals difference in the forward lines from, e from either half. 
No. Fitness is a factor, and also I think the the fact that you, we've got a slightly more coherent team out in in the second half. But I want to know what you've got gone for then, guys. So uh, again, tough. No, not not a prediction so much as we talk about like a team that we'd like to see play. More likely, we'll see Liverpool come towards this as the uh, as preseason progresses. But interesting, Chris Carius, because just keep playing until he stops throwing the ball. In the back stops of the throwing net. the ball in the back of his net, or get, or gets off. Um, I, though I, I went for Ward yeah, uh, you did Tom I, I don't know whether your thinking was the same as mine like again he had nothing to do and nothing at all to exactly. do in the second half I, I liked I liked how vocal he was I liked how he organised himself I want to get I want to get a clearer idea no, just and, and see more, if, if Tranmere are likely following the chest of all to be slightly more dangerous first half just on a fitness sense yeah. Why not? Why not start Ward and give him the harder of the halves, as it were? Well, I mean, Carius got his chance at the end of last season. Give Ward at least a bit of pre-season. I know he's going to change it, and Carius will probably come in second half or the other way round, like they did against Chester. But just, I want to see him. I think every Liverpool fan just wants to see him in goal, see what he can do. Yeah, I think we're all desperate to see Fabinho and Cater in the team one way or the other, aren't we? Um, again, I just wonder whether that's like. He just he knows that. <laughs> He's just gonna keep that keep that for us. Tantalise us as much maybe, as possible. Maybe maybe what you lads should have done is not pick as good a defence if you wanted to see Ward first half and see how good he is. Because maybe if you played four yeah. kids in front of him, we actually get to see Ward make a few saves and stuff. Yeah. With that defence going against Tamir, I can't imagine that they're gonna have too many shots. Yeah. Um but the Fabinho and Cater stuff, for me, I've gone with the four three three and, and I see the two at the back. And Pickles, Phillips. <laughs> does look a bit like Pickles, doesn't it? But no, definitely not. I want Pickles in my belly. Phillips at the back. Uh, so for being I'm going to say play the base, play the base again, and I want to see Kaita play a little bit more advanced this yeah, time. Yeah. Because I think what we saw last time was Kaita play very withdrawn and in one of those six ones. And I've gone with like Milner to back up Jones, um, just because I saw how good he was at talking to the younger players and. I feel like he'd be brilliant, and I want to see Solanke up top in that number nine position on his own. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what we do again. Whether we do go four, two, three, one, I I feel like we we might because yeah. again, because we keep saying this, we've got to get players into this team, and we don't have enough midfielders to put to six. We haven't got six midfielders effectively to put out, so that we might we might well see another one. I want to see, and I had it there because I'm a fucking glutton for punishment. I want to see Daniel Sturridge. In a more in, in, in the that, ten in that ten in that withdrawn striker yes. role, see what he can do. Let him pull the strings. Let him stroll around. If nothing else, worst case, and this is not necessarily me getting sucked in. We did the, the transfer latest podcast on the RedmenTV.com. Go and listen to it. We talked that length about how we are falling for Daniel Sturridge once again. But if nothing else, because you love him, you love man. Yeah, you can't help it. Know. You know what I mean? Because I think there's a balance there. Because I think you're right. I think we need to get Solanke in Solanke or Origi. Because I think one of the two of them will will almost certainly be on the bench for West Ham, um, and possibly even start in that game, depending on Roberto Firmino's. Um, if Sam May still got that forty-five year old fella at the back, might well have. They I might well so. have. I think Solanke needs to go up against him. Yeah, absolutely. But the, you know, I, Daniel Sturridge should be at the very worst case put in the best possible shop window. Yeah. You know, put all the best dressing around him. You know what I mean? Give him a great, give him a great backdrop. Really make him look. Like an absolute beast, and if you put him in a situation where he doesn't have to be legging around so much, where he can kind of just dictate the play around him, you 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 not because there'll be there'll be there'll be plenty of clubs looking at Daniel Sturridge, and some of them will be going, well, he's not quite the guy he was before. But if you can sell him as this, sell him as this creative, I'm bought into it. Like Rooney is the centre mid yeah, type of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, all that right. yeah he might not have the pace, but look at him dictate the play. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, let us know your thoughts on what team you'd like to see then in the comments below. I'm looking forward to it. I I, I am much yeah. like I was looking forward to for, to to Chester because. This is this is, whether we like it or not, and people might hate preseason games. This is the best time to be a fan because everything exists in possibility. You can look at these lads and you can convince yourself that they're going to be absolute world superstars before they end up getting loaned to Barnsley or whatever. Like, so uh, sorry, Ryan. Um, I'm, so. I'm genuinely looking forward. I just want to see more goals. I want to see us click. There was there was some great passages of play where you're seeing little flicks, little touches, and I know that there's a massive gulf in class. So show off, be be just bastards on the pitch, and just just decide to flick it through someone's legs and score a goal and get people off the feet. I'll be Mineiro meg two people in a row last yes, game. Yes, did do it with again like, with a heel drag. It was sorted, incredible. Yeah. Sorted. Kater scored a goal from midfield, and 
and then I want Origi to score. I really want Origi to get off the mark, and I I want him to be a big part of this team because you saw in that run in the Europa League a few years back. He was instrumental there, and I think he could do something for He was a bit streaky, wasn't he? Really? Yeah. When he whenever he got, got a goal, he'd always get a few goals, but then he'd have a little patch, wasn't he? Yeah. You get strikers like that, I wonder if that is just the way that he is. Yeah, like, it but. could well be, and I guess we'll get a little bit of a slightly clearer idea of watching them uh, this week. But yeah, brilliant. Obviously, we're building up because we're doing the starting 11 prediction. Got an amazing amount of content. Obviously, pre season. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> um, pre season really kicking up and wrapping it together. But we've got transfers coming. We've got the Reds. Uh, transfer latest podcast is up now on the website. The transfer roundup shows coming up this week as well, and obviously we've got final words from Chester, and we'll have one from this game as well. So if you need coverage, coverage galore in the best possible quality, uh, go and sign up, start your free month trial, and support everything that we do as well. Thank you very much for watching or listening, and we'll see you all soon.